Hey, what's up guys? BJ Zell here, and in today's tutorial, I'm gonna walk you through my process creating a design from start to finish using Photoshop and the Artist 15.6 inch Pro tablet from XP Pen. So this tablet is huge and it is gorgeous. Uh, this actually works as a secondary display for either your laptop or your desktop computer. There's eight customizable express keys on the side. It's got a jog wheel and the pen for this thing is fantastic. Number one, you don't have to charge it, which is great. It's got 60 degrees of tilt functionality and it's got over eight thousand levels of pressure sensitivity built in so let's take this thing for a spin and see what it can do all right guys let's go ahead and jump into the video today a tutorial on how to use photoshop with the xp pen artist 15.6 inch pro the good folks at xp pen sent me this to do a tutorial review on so that's what we're going to do today first thing i want to talk about though are the express keys over here and how i have them set up so you can kind of follow along with the video so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to finder i'm using a mac so we're going to go to applications and then the pen tablet folder this is going to allow us to open up the pen tablet setting so we'll pull that up first and I'll walk you through the settings here. So as you can see here, I've got the express keys open in the menu and the shortcut keys K1 through K8 are down here on the side. And you can actually select these and customize them from the drop down menu. So there's kind of preset ones in here you can choose from, or you can actually go into customer defined here to kind of get them to be exactly, you know, to your style of work. So I will walk you through exactly how I set them up for mine once we hop in here. So we're in Photoshop now. Let's go ahead and go up to file and go to new and let's start a new canvas here. I'm going to go ahead and use a 4,500 by 5,400, 300 DPI canvas. Let's create that. And I've got the, the background kind of set to this kind of rose color. So everything pops a little bit here. So now to the express keys, these top three, I have these set. And once I press these, you'll be able to see down here what they do. So we're going to press the top one. I've got this one set to cut. Next one down's copy. Next one down's paste. This is nice just because you don't have to go up in the menus or reach over to your keyboard and use the shortcut keys over there. So it makes it nice and handy to have these here. Uh, next one I want to talk about is the red wheel. And with this red wheel, what it does is it will allow you to zoom in and out on your canvas. And that's why this button above here, this express key, I've got this set up for the hand. So with this, you can go from the wheel to the hand really easy and navigate pretty quickly through the entire canvas and it makes it really nice. So uh, next one down from there, let's go ahead and just uh, draw a line here. So let me make sure that I've got this set here and I'm just gonna draw a line. This next one down, I have this set to undo. So with this wheel, this is going to be one of the main things that I use once I start this tutorial and you'll see me zooming in and out quite a bit. And it's really nice when you have this kind of central function to have your most used buttons right around here. So that's why I have this one set to undo. And then likewise, I've got this bottom one set to redo just because those are so close together. If I accidentally hit the undo when I don't want to, I can quickly redo it. Um, Next one down here is the new layer button. So that's nice to have that easily accessible. And then finally down at the bottom, I've got this one that switches from the pen to the eraser. Now the, the pen itself actually has some buttons here on the side too that will open up different options. Here we have the brush settings. So that makes that nice. And you can also, I've got it set up for this back button here to switch between the pen and the eraser as well. So uh, I, prefer to do it over here. I don't like to have this kind of setting with my thumb on it because it's going to hit a little bit too often and kind of screws me up. So I kind of put that off to the side and just have that over there. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump in here and get started then. Uh, as you can see, I've got the background right here and then I've got a new layer. That's going to be my sketch layer. And I'm going to change the color of my brush to a blue color. Usually when I'm doing sketching, I like to have that blue there. Uh, makes me kind of go a little bit looser with the sketch and I don't really have to worry about making everything perfect uh, with the sketch. I really want it to kind of stay, you know, nice and, and loose and organic. And I think uh, doing it with black, it, it has a, a tendency to 
kind of make me try to make everything perfect, which I, I don't like to do in the sketch phase. So let's go ahead and just start sketching. Uh, with it being this time of year and right around the holidays, I thought it would be cool to do a holiday design and maybe do like a, a kind of fox dressed up in a, a Santa hat uh, with some presents off to his side. I thought that would be a, a pretty cute choice for, for this one. So that's what we're going to do today. Have him kind of sitting on his hind legs here and get the, the ears here and then the hat here up at the top. Have it kind of folded down on the back here like so. And with my sketching, I just really try to, to not worry too much, like I said, about making everything perfect. My main goal is just to kind of get uh, just everything in a position where it's supposed to be. And then once I go in with the, the ink and, and do the lines, that's when I can kind of worry about making sure that everything's perfect and is exactly where it, it needs to go. Makes it a little bit easier to not have to worry about it totally on the sketch phase. And like I said, just keeps everything loose and just a little bit more organic and almost fun just because of not having to pay total attention to, you know, detail and, and just letting your imagination run free and your wrist kind of do all the work here. Just get the, the basic shape of everything in here, and then we'll start a new layer to actually start our work with the lines. All right, so I think it's pretty good for the sketch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and make a new layer. So we're going to add the layer down here, or if you have your hotkey set up like I do, you can also press this one to make a new layer. And then we're going to drag this one down and underneath the line. Actually, no, I'm sorry. We're going to keep this one on top. Uh, so we want this one to be underneath the sketch lines. So we're going to drop the opacity of this one. I want to be able to see where the lines are, but I don't want them to be totally visible because I need to be able to draw on top of them without, you know, being distracted too much. So now that we've got that, I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here and we're going to start to kind of lay in the work here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the sketch layer or the uh, line layer down a little bit as well 
because I want to draw this present over top and then by doing this on a separate layer it's going to allow me to go back in and erase any of those parts that overlap it's gonna make it a little bit easier here to do it this way so down here and erase those overlapping parts and then we'll turn the opacity back up on that bottom line layer after we're done and then we'll merge those together okay then we're going to turn the opacity back up to layer and we're going to go to merge down okay so now let me zoom out here so we can see the design so we've got the completed inked version so I'm gonna go ahead now and turn off the sketch layer so now we're left with just the line layer and now I'm going to start filling stuff in. So to do this, what I want to do is I actually want to duplicate this layer. So we're going to select that layer, which we go up to layer and we're going to go to duplicate layer. And then this bottom layer is the one that we're going to drop the colors into. This is just going to make it easier to use the paint bucket tool to drop these in fairly seamlessly so okay and I did notice I want to go back up here and get a tongue in here for him there we go that looks better okay so now we're going to go ahead and switch over to a lighter color for his chest and his ears <laughs> Okay, now that we have the color flats laid in, we can go ahead and start shading. This is gonna be uh, using a cell shaded style. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make a new layer. Let's get them pressing the express key. And then for this one, I'm going to check this box. It says use previous layer to create clipping mask. So when I do that, basically this layer is gonna use the information from this layer. And then I will be able to go in and actually fill in sections and not go outside of the lines you'll we'll see it's going to stay inside of the lines here so that makes it really kind of easy you don't have to worry about staying inside there and don't have to do as much cleanup later on so this is going to make everything go pretty quick 
And you'll see I'm going in with this very hard, heavy black. But after I get enough of this in here, get enough colors covered, we're going to go back in. We're going to drop the opacity of this down. It's going to kind of speed up the process of making sure that some areas aren't too light and some areas aren't too dark, just to make sure that we've got a bunch of different areas covered. And then I will actually go back in and do some eraser on, on part of this because I don't want everything to be a solid shadow. I want to have some extra kind of side highlights off of this. And then we will also do a full on highlight layer as well. So. Okay, now that I've got enough colors kind of covered, what I'm gonna do is go up here to the opacity of that layer and then just slide this down until I get it to look kind of natural. I don't want it too dark, I don't want it too light. So it's just kind of a, a back and forth, trying to get that perfect level. And then now, like I said, I'm gonna go in and do just a little bit of erasing here and there, just to start on making some of the stuff pop and not look too dark. Okay, now that we have that done, finally we can go in and add the highlights layer. So once again, I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer with my express key. I wanna have the clipping mask selected again. And then we're gonna go in this time with white rather than black. the opacity of this layer so we just get some nice highlights we don't want them too white then finally I'm gonna make a new layer down here just drag and drop this behind here and this one I'm just gonna fill in with white just a regular white background then finally, to kind of finish this off, I'm gonna go back up to my lines layer, and I'm gonna just do a, a couple more, just kind of accent lines for the fur coming around, just to make it pop a little bit more. Just these really light lines. And there we go, our finished holiday fox piece using Photoshop along with the Artist 15.6 inch Pro 